Buongiorno, buongiorno. Uh, mi chiamo Zeno Rocha, vengo del Brasile, and that's all the Italian I know. Uh, today we're gonna dive deeper into DXP Cloud, just show more details, go more technical into everything that goes behind DXP Cloud. Uh, if some of you doesn't uh, heard the talk yesterday, DXP Cloud is this new enterprise uh, solution that simplifies development, management, monitoring of your library DXP application and gives you a platform as a service that you can benefit and uh, scale up with that. So let's just contextualize this problem, right? Let's say we, we imagine like a big wine retailer, okay? We, we, we all work on this company together. Uh, the name of this company is called Wine Ray. Okay, we all work at Wine Ray. So we have like the best wines you can ever think. We have Brunello de Montalcino, we have Barbaresco, we have everything you can imagine. And we have more than 3,000 employees. It's a very big company. We are spread all over the world. We have lots of employees. And we have our departments, right? We have Gianlu Gianluigi as our IT manager. We have Monica as our marketing manager, and we have our CEO, Luciano. So we sell wine all over the world, and how can we can connect these 3,000 employees, all our departments, with our customers? Well, we're probably going to need a website to put our catalog of wines and everything that we have on our company. And we're probably going to need an intranet because we have so many employees, we need to post updates and everything else. So how can we do that? How can we accomplish this application in a way that is good? Well, fortunately, there's a product called Liferay. We have a portal that is really popular, really good for that kind of problem. And it's a really good solution. So let's say WineRay now decided to use Liferay as a solution. And they think, OK, now let's start our digital transformation. But here's the thing. Choosing the technology is only the first step into this digital transformation. Now, there are many other challenges that we have to uh, tackle, and it's not easy. How can we transform this tool, the library tool, into our website, into the Wine Ray website? Uh, well, there are many things that we have to consider. And if we're going deeper on the decisions that we have to make, well, maybe first you have to choose the OS that you're going to use. Should I use Ubuntu, Debian? There's so many options. Then we have to choose the database. Maybe you already have a database that we are using, but if we don't have, which one are we going to choose? If we already have, how we're going to connect our library to the database? Then you have to choose the, web, the app server that you're going to use. There's so many options. Then you have to choose the web server, and then you have to understand the web server. You need to maintain the technology, and then you need a search engine to be alongside that portal. Maybe you're going to use Elasticsearch, and if you are, then you have to consider using Logstash, Kibana. So there's so many different things that goes along all this ecosystem, and we have not only to deploy those things, we have to maintain, we have to upgrade new versions. It's a lot of work. Well, DXP Cloud helps with those decisions in what technology uh, it brings to the table. So we have a stack of services, like for DXP, we have a load balancer using Nginx, we have a database, MariaDB, using RGS behind the scenes, and we have Elasticsearch. And choosing those technologies is one step. Of course, now there is like, how can I put together all these technologies and how can we put together in a secure way, in a way that uh, it's reliable? So in the end, what we want is to have our DXP access in the cloud, but we need to do that in a secure way. Uh, we have all these services. How can we do that? Uh, on DXP Cloud, we have this concept of private network. So inside a private network, I can communicate with my services, and then I can only expose my load balancer to the internet, and they are secured and everything else. So when I'm talking my load balancer 
to the internet, I can talk via HTTP. When I'm talking inside this private network, I can communicate using the host name of each of the services, and everything is secure over there. What about the development itself? Now that I made those choices, now that we know what we're going to use at WineRay and everything's connected in a secure way, how can we start developing? Let's say you don't use DXP Cloud. Well, Biofree provides you a documentation with all these nice resources on how you can install your workspace, configure everything, uh, set up the machine of each and every one of your developers. So this takes time. You have, there's a learning curve, of course. Uh, with DXP Cloud, we give you a GitHub repo so you can have all your code base from the get-go. So we give you like the WineRay repository, and we have the workspace EE over there so you can go and start your project right away with all the tooling that you expect from LifeRay. You got LifeRay IDE, or if you want to use Eclipse and put the LifeRay plugins over there, you can also use that. And we already have some extension points that you can use. So we have a deploy folder that if you put your jars or WAR files, we're already going to deploy that. We have a config folder if you want to put your OSGI configurations over there. And license hotfix, of course, the portal properties files that you can extend, put your own configurations and everything. OK. But now that I have my GitHub repository, how can I do the development? How is the workflow between, like how things happen, right? How can I, what about continuous integration? How can I make sure that the branches that I'm using are actually triggering builds and everything? Well, I love this quote. Uh, I couldn't find the author, but I really like it. And it talks about automated tests. We all know the importance of having automated tests. And we probably already do a lot of automated tests. Uh, and what it says is that having automated tests but no continuous integration is like having a sword and letting it rot. That means like, what it, even if you have the best tooling, the best test around, if you don't use it properly, there's no value on it. So you really need a strong CI and CD solution. So with DXP Cloud, we already give you a Jenkins so you can hook up in this repository. It's actually already hooked up. Uh, for you. We use like this new Blue Ocean interface from Jenkins. We already have the Jenkins pipelines inside the repo, and we already hook those that GitHub repo to uh, Jenkins. So let's say, let's see the, the repository. Here are some of the files. This is the Jenkins file with all the pipelines on it. And you can change these stages and you can configure because we know that every single uh, project has different things that they need to run on their CI. And we are also have the webhooks on the repository already talking to Jenkins. So from the start, you can already go to your Jenkins. We already have a Jenkins for you. You can check the WineRay project, and you can see the branches, and you can see the different stages that it runs out of the box. What about environments? So we have GitHub. We have the CI over there. What about the different environments that we usually have? At WineRay, we don't want to keep pushing things to production right away, right? We want to test on UAT. We want to test first on dev, and then we promote things to other environments. So here's a, uh, a screenshot from my WineRay project. I have these different environments. I have dev. I have UAT. I have production. And I can see over there who made the last deployment. I can see if the builds were fine or not. I can see the git commit information, like the message, when it happened, and everything. So I really like this visualization because it gives you like, right there like, what's happening on every single project, so on every single environment in the same project. And this is all every single environment is hooked up with GitHub, and Jenkins. So let's see the full development lifecycle. Let's simulate something, right? Everything starts from a code. So let's say we're adding a new feature. We're pushing a new portlet. We're going to send a pull request. So over there, I'm sending a new pull request to my WineRay repo. And we can see that there are some pending checks over there. 
So those pending checks is actually Jenkins telling, oh, we're, we're still running. Don't merge this yet. OK, so after we got the pull request, uh, GitHub will trigger a uh, test on Jenkins. So now we can go to Jenkins and then see that there's a PR1 over there. So now this branch is starting to build, and all the pipelines are running over there. OK, now that we are building, we can actually go over there and see all the stages that I have on my Jenkins pipeline. I can see the sonar scan, integration tests, everything that I need there. And I see this deployment step. What this is doing is, in the end, Jenkins will call DXP Cloud and push the, all the, the build to G, DXP Cloud. Now I can go to DXP Cloud, see this, the latest build. In this case, we're doing on the dev environment. And then from there, I can choose to deploy that build or not. In this case, I'm going to deploy. So I'm going to choose the dev environment, and I'm going to deploy. OK, we are running the deployment now. We're pushing to the dev environment. And now, OK, everything is green. I can go click, see if my portlet is running the way it's supposed to run. Everything is up. OK, that's awesome. And then finally, I can go and merge. So all this process is really powerful because you can actually tell that, OK, we build, we, we send a pull request, all the tests passed, but you can validate if the functionality is there visually on your life rate because after the deployment, we have a dive environment to see. So you can really merge with confidence and know that you have something that is really reliable. So you have these multiple environments, and the development lifecycle goes in these multiple environments. And you have multiple people working on those multiple environments. So there's another challenge that comes from that. So how can you, you manage access? Let's say we have a team, we have a tech lead that is like supervising the work. We have a developer that is actually building the application. And we have an intern that is trying to do something, trying not to break stuff. Uh, those people, they need different types of access depending on the environment they are. The tech lead probably needs admin in all the, the, the environments because they are changing stuff and making administration things. The developer, maybe he needs read and write to the dev, maybe a administration to the dev, read and write to UAT, but he can't change anything on production. And the intern, he cannot change anything anywhere. Just like see what's going on and maybe write permissions on dev. So it's really tricky to manage all these this permissions. Uh, the good news is that DXP Cloud helps with that. So there are different types of collaboration tools that we offer. On the environment level, you can choose who is going to do what. So in this case, I'm adding a new team member, and I can choose the roles, the different roles on my environment. I have the admin role, which has full control over the environment. We have a contributor that has most of the control, but cannot manage members or do advanced uh, tasks. And we have a guest that is a person that is there. They can see the information, they can read, but they cannot write things. OK, what about the team? Let's say I have different environments. I have a dev and I have a prod. As we said before, we want different roles. In this case, I have this guy as admin. Though both of them are admins on dev, but on production, they are not. So you can actually customize different roles per environment. So that's really powerful. So I can have the dev, everybody's admin, for example. And on the prod, I have an admin, a guest, and a contributor. And another important piece is being able to audit everything that is happening. So if you go to activities, you can actually see who did what and when. So I can see that if my intern changed like an environment variable, I can tell him like, hey, why you do that? Like this thing broke this other thing. You shouldn't be doing this. So I can really discover the why of every single action that happened on the system. Another important piece is especially for enterprises, is the ability to connect to other systems. At Winery, this company that we work for, we have an on-premise servers, 
and maybe we have like an ERP and an HR software inside this on-premise services. ZXP Cloud has a VPN capability that we can actually connect the VPN from ZXP Cloud to our on-premise server. So how this works, we go to settings, we type the server address of the VPN, we're gonna put the IP over there, the user, the password, and we can put the certificate over there. Now we're actually connecting this environment, because you have VPN controls per environment, with my server. What, this, what is happening behind the scenes is that now that I have my private network, my environment over there, I can actually create this private tunnel, a very secure tunnel, and they can communicate with each other. The other step, going even further, is the ability to choose the port forwarding. Over here, we are putting our ERP software inside that server that I have, and I'm mapping the ports of that server to my project. So now, like, we have each service, there's a different host name and a different port that you can communicate to in both of the servers. And now I can actually tell and communicate with my ERP software by that port that I used. So it's like this unique port that you can communicate in a secure way between those two servers. Those are all nice things that I can do, but sometimes not everything goes right, right? Sometimes things go bad, and you need ways to act on those things. Uh, one thing that we offer is the ability to see the logs. So this is cool because I can see the logs of every single service that I have. I can see the time, the timestamp, and everything. I can check the logs of my life ray, of my load balancer, see how, how is that going. And I can also check uh, the monitoring of my CPU, memory, transfer, and health. So you can go to any service. Over here we are on the Elasticsearch service, and I can see my CPU usage. I can filter the time, and I can actually see what's going on if there's any peak. And I can see the memory, RAM. I can see transfer both in and out. So it's really nice. It's a really a good way to see like right away what's going on with my service. Another layer that we add is Dynatrace. We know that lots of enterprise customers, they need an even more advanced uh, metrics, especially when it comes to the JVM, so you can use Dynatrace to check that. What if something goes wrong and you need advanced access, even more than that? Checking the logs is not enough. Uh, we give you CLI access, like shell access, to your container. So you can see everything that is happening over there, make changes on the files if you want. Uh, and then after you're done with those changes, you can uh, go and, and make the change on the project itself. So you can choose the multiple instances. Let's say you have a cluster with three instances. You can choose the instance you want to log into and then access. You can do that both from this web UI that we're showing over here and also from a CLI. So straight from your terminal, you can access that shell. But what if something goes really wrong? Not, not just like, oh, someone just like went there and now my site, the WineRay site is offline. What, what can we do? At WineRay, we have this internet, we have this catalog that is huge, lots of wines. We can't lose the data. Data is our most important asset. And we know that uh, at GXP Cloud. And even if you have your own uh, backup strategy at your company, doing a backup of life for instance properly is not a trivial work. There are lots of different pieces that you have to consider when you're doing backups for life ray. So that's where GXP Cloud can help as well. So on GXP Cloud, we give you the power to do backups at any time. You go to this uh, UI, and right now I'm going to click this button, and it's going to trigger a manual backup. Let's say I'm close to doing a release, so I want to make sure everything is backed up before doing a release, so I, I can go there and just click this button. The way this works behind the scenes is we do two actions uh, in sync. First, we go to our life ray, we compress the file store, we copy all the files, 
At the same time, we go to the database, we make a database dump, we take a snapshot of the database, we upload the results of those two things to our servers, and you have your data secure. We also replicate those backups. And you have the ability to have automated backups, not only manual that you just click over there, but by default, you have uh, backups every 12 hours. So if you see on, on the side, you can ch actually check when was the oldest backup, you can check when it was the latest backup, and when is the next one happening. So the, the way it works is pretty much the same, but we just have a scheduler that runs those actions every 12 hours. So there's data integrity, which is super important when you're talking about backups, and there's no corruption when you're doing that action. If one of those pieces fails, the, the UI is going to show you that, oh, the backup has failed, so you have to uh, take action on that. What about restoring? Because backups, it's like just only one part, making sure you have something replicated. What about restoring the data? So we have the data replicated in two different regions. But the biggest question when you're talking about backups is always, how long can you recover? How fast can you recover? It's awesome, everybody has backups, but let's say something really, oops, really, something really bad happens, how, can you, how fast can you recover? So at DXP Cloud, and this is one of the features I like the most, you can actually just choose any backup you had over time. I, let's say something bad happened on October 23rd at this time, I can actually go like three, four backups before and restore that backup. So in this case, let's go there, restore, and I'm actually gonna choose the environment. I can actually say, oh no, let's restore a backup to UAT because we're testing a new feature. Or no, let's say something happened in production, we can restore that backup in production. The way this happens is because we're restoring a backup, it's, more, it's a more sensitive action. We actually have to stop your life, for instance. We prevent the database from writing anything. And then we fetch the, the file system backup, we fetch the database backup, and we put the files on our services. Okay, this is when something bad happens. On, maybe someone did something bad on, on the team, and then you have to act on it. But what if there's unexpected traffic? We have wines all over the place at Wine Ray, and maybe there's a new Netflix show that shows our wine, and now everybody wants to buy it. And you didn't know that. So imagine the CPU now is going a lot over the limits. The memory is going a lot higher. How can we, what can we do about it? We don't want our website to go offline. We actually want to do something about it. So DXP Cloud sends you alerts when something goes bad. So let's say uh, I have my life free service, and for the last five minutes, I'm using like 90% of the memory. What DXP Cloud is going to do, it's going to show an alert on the UI. It's going to tell you if it's still ongoing or if the alert is resolved. Maybe it was just a peak, or maybe this is like happening for the last one hour. So you need to know right away. We also send you an email that you can check from whatever you want about that alert. Or let's say there's another scenario. At Wine Ray, we are doing this new marketing campaign. The marketing department came and said, hey, Black Friday is coming. We're going to do a Black Friday at Wine Ray. Let's say we st we're still using on-premise servers, right? We're not using DXP Cloud. What happens with that kind of situation? Let's say we have like these four servers and I have uh, different instances over there. Uh, well, maybe I need to be ready for that campaign so I can allocate another server or another server or another server. And even if I plan for that traffic, maybe I have like a very expensive wine that is like $5. I don't know. It's a crazy campaign. Now, how can we uh, make sure that even the servers that we allocated are actually going to handle the load? Maybe they are not. So what we give you is the ability to auto scale depending on the traffic. So this, uh, it's a nice way to keep, to make sure that everything's gonna be up all the time. So in this case, uh, let's say we're hitting 90% of our memory and I can actually check on my metrics that, oh no, it's really 
close to my image so I can enable outer scaling. And then as soon as we detect that we are reaching the limit, boom, a new instance has been added. And now I have another instance on my cluster. And now I have a new instance over there. So the way this works, let's say we have users coming up, right? They are going through our load balancer. They are hitting those different instances that we have. And we have this load balancer in front to make sure that they are going to the right instance all the time. Because if I add a new one, you want to make sure that the users are not going to the instances that are really high. They're actually going to this new one. So with our load balancer, uh, with the sticky session, you make sure that when we are adding new users, they are not losing the session. They are still doing something. Because let's say at Ryan Ray, we have a cart, and we don't want people to, they're going to buy a wine, and then they lose their session. You don't want to do that. So you can actually auto scale that way. And the same goes for downscaling. Let's say there's no Black Friday anymore. We can actually downscale. This action is a manual action. It's not automatic because you need to have control over that process. Because in this action, you're actually going to lose session. There's no way around it. So you can go there, uh, pick how many instances you want to uh, downscale, and then you downscale. And at the end of the day, what we want in our company and what we want with this product is everybody to be happy, right? We want Monica from our marketing team to be super happy because you know, sales are increasing and now they can evolve faster. So for them, it's, this is a good solution because at the end of the day, they can create new campaigns. They don't have to be uh, like hold by other departments. Gianluigi in our IT department, he's super happy because now he can deliver new features with confidence that nothing's going down and they can actually have something that is reliable. And Luciano, our CEO, he's happy because business is growing and they can focus on what matters. At WineRay, we sell wine. So we don't want to care about servers. We don't want to care about whatever is going on behind the scenes. What we care is that we can deliver value to our customers. So at the end of the day, all businesses, they want to focus on what they really are good at. So this tool can help with that. If you want to hear more, know more about DXP Cloud, go to our website. We have uh, all sorts of information, white papers and everything. And that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you.